Hello everybody, this is Anyman reminding you that you have and are the power. And to help you with this quest to learn how to use this power, we bring you again the Batman Handbook, the ultimate training manual by Scott Beatty, published by Quirk Publications. Today, we're going back to chapter one, but this time we're going to section two. How to make a bat suit. Bruce Wayne never intended to become a costumed crime fighter. In fact, when he first hit the mean streets of Gotham City, Bruce went deep undercover as a homeless person to catch criminals in the act. His first night out, he got shot after a scuffle with a pimp and the police. He barely made it back to Wayne Manor with his life. Bruce sat in his study and contemplated what might have been a very brief crime fighting career. He realized that to defeat criminals he would need a more menacing disguise. As if on cue, a wayward bat crashed through his study window and gave Bruce the inspiration he needed. He would strike fear into the hearts of the cowardly and superstitious criminals everywhere as Batman. Soon enough, this dark knight became an urban legend in Gotham City. Outfitted in a costume that gave him a fearsome persona as well as crime-fighting credibility. As you go about designing and rendering your own costume, consider the symbolic and practical considerations Bruce employed to create the bat suit. Step 1. Select a design motif or totem to, to represent your costumed alter ego. The bat strikes fear into mortal hearts because of mythic associations that have persisted throughout the ages. Bats are bloodthirsty. Bats are vampires. Bats are creatures of darkness. In choosing the bat to be his totem, Bruce could take full advantage of the creature's unique abilities such as flight and echolocation, as well as the ability to frighten. If instead of a bat, a flittering moth had flown through his study window, Bruce might not have found such a perfectly suited inspiration. Just ask his foe, the killer moth, who tried to be to lawbreakers what Batman is to law-abiding citizens. Complete with a mothmobile and moth signal, Mothman offered paid protection to crooks while Batman defended Gotham. You need to be larger than life, not laughable. So choose your alter ego with care. Step 2. Use lightweight, fireproof, and bulletproof armor. Batman's lightweight costume was sewn by Alfred Pennyworth, Bruce's oldest friend and valet, and the first person privy to the legend of the Dark Knight. Though tight-fitting, the uniform is not constrictive, allowing freedom of movement for even the most agile acrobatics or fighting maneuvers. The costume is sewn from Nomex fabric, making it fireproof even under the hottest temperatures. More importantly, the bat suit is bulletproof with Kevlar panels sewn into the shirt portion to protect Bruce's torso from ballistic projectiles, particularly in the area surrounding the bat emblem. Remember that your costume is more than a theatrical effect. Its utilitarian components will help to ensure that you make more than a one-night stand against the forces of evil. Step 3. Use colors that camouflage easily. Camouflage can save your life. Only a virtually invulnerable hero who operates in the daytime would wear bright blue, red, and yellow. Batman's black and dark gray costume allows him to blend into shadows and move stealthily. Step 4. Consider the benefits of a cape, cowl, and mask. A mask is an absolute necessity in superheroics. You've got to protect your secret identity, after all. And while a domino mask alone may work for Robin, Batman's more concealing cowl completes the intimidating bat imagery, right down to the ears and one-way opaque eyelets. Since criminals can't see the Dark Knight's eyes, they never can tell what he's thinking. Batman's cowl affords him extra protection, see Secret Batsuit Weapons, page 19, and provides additional space for microelectronics gear, his voice-activated Batmobile remote control, Comlink, etc. His scalloped cape is also effective both as protective gear, see Secret Batsuit Weapons, page 19, 
and for its intimidating bat-like effect, especially when the flapping cloak trails behind him as he drops down on criminals. This image alone is sometimes enough to stop a fight before it even starts. Often when Batman swoops down on criminals, he's left with only the sound of the hoodlum's weapons clattering to the ground as they turn tail and run for their lives. Keep in mind that capes can be constrictive. Never let an adversary use your own cloak to entangle you. Before his first night out on, in the bat suit, Batman practiced fighting techniques while fully costumed so that he would be prepared for any eventuality. These days, the bat suit is like a second skin to the Dark Knight. The bat suit schematic includes a high gain microwave antenna in the left bat ear, a Kevlar reinforced cowl, a wireless, voice activated Batmobile remote control mechanism in the cowl where the throat is. Nomex fire resistant fabric, his utility belt, knuckle pouches packed with lead shot in his gloves, steel toed climbing boots, and his scalloped cape has weighted tips for offensive purposes. Step 5 Wear gloves and boots for protection, security, and traction. Batman's gloves and boots aren't just bold fashion statements. His gloves ensure that he never leaves behind fingerprints that would tip off the GCPD to his identity as Bruce Wayne. Batman's gloves are also customized with an integral ascender rail attached in each palm to aid climbing up or rappelling down the sheer sides of buildings with jump lines. Packing small po pockets over each knuckle with lead shot adds a certain extra heft to the Cape Crusader's powerful punches. Batman's boots are lightweight, but reinforced with steel toes for delivering devastating kicks. The soles are made from thermally stable rubberized material and designed just like climbing boots with split ASIM slingshot heels for maximum flex. The gloves and boots integrate Nomex material for additional fireproofing. Step 6. Store your tools in your utility belt, not in compartments hidden around your body. The Dark Knight keeps most of the tools of his trade in his utility belt, although these are supplemented by tricks hidden throughout his costume. See opposite page. Keep your most vital utilities close to the belt, where they are more reliably accessible and useful, especially when you find yourself trussed up by a foe. Batman is committed to memory the location of each high-tech gadget in his utility belt so that he can retrieve a batarang or rebreather without looking. If a belt isn't your style, consider the benefits of using a utility bandolier or the like. Bat Symbolism Why would Batman emblazon a bat symbol with a bright, within a bright yellow oval across his chest when such a style f choice flies in the face of stealth? The answer is simple. It's a target. Before he bulletproofed his cowl, the Dark Knight wanted to draw attention away from his face and head by having gunmen aim at his chest and torso, which were layered with projectile-resistant Kevlar panels sewn into the bat suit. Better that he take a shot to these well-protected areas than risk ending his crime-fighting career with just one well-aimed or even errant slug. Now that he employs his Kevlar crash helmet cowl, Batman has abandoned the yellow oval in favor of the single defining bat silhouette the sight of which is often enough to make a goon drop his gun before ever firing off a single shot. Secret Batsuit Weapons Supervillains have learned the hard way that the Dark Knight's costume conceals a few secret weapons of its own in addition to those he keeps in his utility belt. Kevlar Cowl Trigger-happy gunmen often aim for the Dark Knight's head, assuming correctly that his torso is shielded with Kevlar. But Batman's cowl which is hardwired with various communications gear, also doubles as a Kevlar crash helmet that protects his head from bullets and bashes from blunt objects. Suit Taser Electrodes circulating throughout the bat suit transform the caped crusader's costume into a single shot taser. This weapon of last resort will zap an attacker with 200,000 coruscating volts of electricity while leaving Batman, insulated via an internal bat suit lining, feeling no ill effects. The taser is fired with fingertip controls in Batman's gloves, but can only be used once. Weighted Cape Sewn from Nomex fire retardant fabric, the Dark Knight's cape has weighted tips in each scalloped point. 
Batman thus can remove it to shield an innocent victim from flames, or to knock a foe senseless by whipping around the weighted tips. Utility Belt Self-Destruct Mechanism Did you know that Batman's utility belt features a digital locking mechanism? Well, neither do his enemies. If the belt is removed without its user entering the proper security code, it will self-destruct on the spot, thereby preventing the Dark Knight's technology from falling into enemy hands. Alternate bat suits. Through, that, through the years, Batman has donned special bat suits outfitted for unique adventures. Some are strange. Some, though seeming to serve a purpose at the time, appear ungainly in retrospect. Diving bat suit. This neoprene frogman bat suit was equipped with diving weights, a self-contained rebreather, goggles, and flippers. A more streamlined version is in use today and features webbed gloves to enhance Batman's speed while swimming. Fireproof Bat Suit With built-in rebreather and heavier Nomex protection, this firefighting costume is still in use, especially when Batman has to enter a ra raging inferno or extinguish fire-loving foes like the Firefly. Luminous Bat Suit This variation on Batman's costume glowed in the dark making the Dark Knight look like a phantom wraith to cowardly criminals. Parachute Cape Bat Suit At one time, both Batman and Robin wore capes that doubled as parachute canopies if they were caught in a freefall without a jump line or grapnel. Skydiving Parachute Similar to a military HAPS, High Altitude Precision Parachute System, Batman's Nomex skydiving rig protects him from extreme cold during jumps and includes an illuminated altimeter, portable oxygen pack, and stealth parachute canopy that is virtually invisible from the ground. Invisibility Refractor Bat Suit Talk about stealth. This bat suit, belonging to the Batman of Tomorrow, a dark knight from the 31st century, bent ambient light around Batman's body to render him completely invisible and yet somehow Robin always knew just where to look when conversing with the invisible bat. Glider Bat Suit In place of a more convenient parachute, this bat suit supported a collapsible glider for high altitude jumps. Bat Snow Suit For wintry weather, or arctic manhunts, this bulky bat suit was camouflaged snowy white and included inter internal dynamos to heat the costume in sub-zero temperatures. Newer versions have kept the camo, but now adopt the aerodynamic and thermally insulated bodysuit designs worn by champion skiers and speed skaters. Lifesaver Bat Suit Buoyant in water, this inflatable bat suit could also be removed and used to create a Batman decoy. Bat Space Suit Heated or air conditioned depending on the environment, this costume protected the Dark Knight from the unforgiving atmosphere of outer space. A spare is kept in the Justice League of America's Watchtower headquarters on the moon. Robin's Foam Bat Suit The Boy Wonder once impersonated his mentor by donning a foam exo costume. The exterior is molded to Batman's size, but its interior cavity fit Robin perfectly. Instead of a standard bat symbol, this bat suit featured a red-breasted Robin symbol that hinted at the true identity of the wearer. Azrael's Bat Suit after Bane broke Batman's back, Jean-Paul Valet, aka Azrael, took up the mantle of the Bat, took up the mantle of the Dark Knight for a tumultuous time. The system, an ancient mix of physical and mental conditioning that made Jean-Paul into a fierce warrior, enabled the young man to update the Bat suit into a more fearsome costume through two distinct alterations. The suit increased the emphasis on body armor and traded Batman's traditional cowl for a high-tech helmet whose visage betrayed no emotion. Batman's gloves also became claw-like gauntlets that fired volleys of razor-sharp batarangs from launchers worn on Jean-Paul's forearms. And so, we finish this second part to this first chapter. Personally, I would say that the theatrics are best saved for after information gathering has been completed. But even then, you really don't need theatrics. 
Consider which is more threatening, the specter of a supernatural villain that you may or may not believe in, who haunts just the night, one that you know you can stay away from and thus commit your crimes, undetected from, undetected by, if you plan accordingly, or someone who could be anyone, anywhere, at any time, doing anything. Someone you can't target for fear that you might target a potential customer or a government agent in disguise. Someone you'd rather not cross because you don't know if it's just one person or if it's several. Someone who could be as close as your own lover or as distant as an immigrant from a foreign land. Someone who could even be you yourself. Of course, all the tools and gadgets and tricks are nice to have, but really, what is the point of keeping